the side B. And everyone knows you can't punish the side B itself. But instead, Numbers would then just Three, position himself, two, react to the one, option afterwards, go. catch the landing. It was on FD, and there's not a whole place, a lot of places that Kamex could retreat to. Normally, this is what we think of as a really good Sonic stage, but Numbers was actually using the fact there are no platforms, no escape options available, and, and God. Numbers does Ooh. not have a jump. Yeah, that could have been so bad. What a good timing on the two frame with that F smash right there. Another part to this also, these two players not afraid to go off stage against each other. Kamex oftentimes will opt for the uh, the spring because it doesn't really put him in harm's way, but still offers a uh, stick of box to deal with numbers. What was that recovery? Yeah, I think numbers was really scared of the F smash and so tried to like mix up when he was grabbing the ledge, but just went a little too high up uh, and made so Kamex could just react and get a pretty free one. All right. Okay, things looking on a little bit dicey for numbers. He's trying to find this stock here. Throwing out these downers in the corner. Good job parrying that F smash, but the question is whether or not you can actually convert it into a stock. Even there, some salutation. 155 on Kamex. It's not enough to do the D. And as a result, even more damage being dished out onto numbers. Look at this 70%. And Roman, he's off stage. Oh. That trade. Somehow both characters are still alive. They're once again meeting at the center, but with Sonic's extra speed, actually, he's uh, still able to push numbers in the corner. Wow, and going so deep and still having mix-ups in his pocket right there. Beautiful parry. I kind of knew that uh, Kamex was like overheating a bit. He was feeling himself. He was going to keep throwing out moves, but still. Okay, it's going to say, great stuff from Kamex. 100% lead right here, and seems to be really good at closing things out right now. Well, that, is, that is such a good control from Sonic. It just puts you so deep. I mean, the question is, though, he needs to find a way to actually end the stop. And Numbers has been doing a, You know, he got hit by that forward smash to kill him earlier. But now he's more aware of that. And it seems that Kamex is a little bit struggling to actually find the finishing blow. Yeah, and forcing these bears a lot right now. Throwing out several in a row. And I like him going deep, but it feels like Numbers is really aware that he's willing to go deep and is waiting it out, so maybe mix it up a bit. Wow. All right. Uh, that was a very kind of strange that Kamek managed to find the hit right there, but in the end it converted yeah. into the uh, back air. I, and I wonder it. if Numbers meant to up tilt when he up tilts it. That being said, if you whiff a homing attack, the lag of you landing is so great, Numbers knowing that. Going to F smash it. And, oh, this is scary. You got that, that bear, the smallest of fast falls to get him back down to the ledge. So good from numbers. Now at 52%, though, he's still trapped here in the corner. That forward smash we've been seeing Kamek's go for it. It was working before, but numbers has adapted. However, next time he's on the stage, he can't just be rolling too comfortably. Kamek's has counterplay. Oh, but Kamex is the one who's on the ledge right now. What is Kamex's own counterplay? What can he do? No ledge invincibility. Oh. Had to go onto the stage, and that's an interception from Numbers. Wow. Numbers is so Where precise is that about that up smash. It's a, it means, while invincible, it's a pretty small move, so it's able to just know exactly where Kamex is going to be. Kind of knows that like little yeah. arc that Sonic makes in his... Uh, it's, yeah. Just, yeah, using the invincibility from it, as you saw right there. And just like think about how... Oh, um, the last stop that we had. Actually, no, we don't have time for it. I think we're getting right into the next game. So it goes. Yeah, and so Numbers closed out that stock with an anti-air, and I think that's where he's going to get even more and more mileage is using anti-air. We haven't seen too many up tilts yet, but Kamex seems so uh, confident right now that he's landing on Numbers a bunch, um, you know, for better and worse. So Numbers can get uh, up tilt a bit more to st stop Sonic from doing, like, landing airs and back airs. I can see this being an even more convincing win for numbers. Okay, yeah. or, or go for that. And uh, one interesting piece of adaptation coming out from Kamex uh, is numbers is going for a lot of these trumps when they're grabbing the ledge after him. And the reason why he died on that last stock was because he basically held the wrong direction after getting trumped. And now he's doing a much better job of himself. But even if he does get trumped, it's not the end of the world where he's pushed into a terrible position. Right, this damage is actually pretty even between both players. Numbers with a little bit of an advantage here, about 
Two. Well, that's actually more of a significant advantage purely because Kamek is at depth percent and numbers oh. is not. Yeah, Kamek is just kind of giving numbers his openings, I feel like. I feel like numbers has not initiated any interaction. It's just waiting for Kamek to do something. And if Kamek is off just a bit, it's going to be a stock or a big percent opening. So Kamek needs to, if he's going to keep playing this aggressive, he needs to be a bit more precise and clean with it. Look at all this damage. Oh, I think he was hoping for, you know, an air dodge to the ground. I'm not exactly sure what that down smash was meant to cover, but nonetheless, 101% on Kamex. Is that death? It almost is. That for sure will be. A bit of frustration from Kamex right now. I mean, this is just such a... Yeah, I don't really blame him too much for going for that because this is kind of just like a near unwinnable position. The way numbers and Kamex have been playing, you can't really, like, just force out two stocks out of numbers, you know? I do want to just talk about, did you see the shield angling from Kamex? Really smart, knowing that his shield is small, he wants to guard from something like a fallen neutral air. But, I mean, at this point, angling your shield is cute and all, but you have to find some way to get an interaction started. They're actually going to be uh, con eventually finding the forward air and taking the stop. I can't believe he just went in and just did it. Yeah, I, I call it, I mean, that time it's got to be beyond precise, so don't blame it, but oof. Not yeah. happy about that. A little bit of saltiness. That is, I mean, that's the 4-0. Numbers took them out 2-0 in winners and 2-0 in losers as well. And I, I feel like that uh, that frustration came out of the play a bit, just with how many times Kamis yeah. was forcing the issue. He started off playing well game one, and then he just tried to, like, kind of ride that success of, like, the first stock for that the whole set, thinking that he can always play aggressive and get away with it. And numbers changed up how he played from the first stock in one game one, close and totally dominated game two, just like I predicted actually might happen, so, you know, a uh, high yeah! uh, <laughs> But we're gonna get into, um, we're gonna get now into Losers Finals, I believe, which will be Numbers and Dill again, so gonna be the run back. Yeah. This is in fact the run back and winners, was it a 2-1 or a 2-0 oh, in Dill's favor? Two. Damn, look at that. Look uh, at that. Look at that. Two o, I believe. Two o, I think. Oh, wait, we can look at the stats. Stats are not quite up to yet. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you just got to send us their uh, player info. I, I think they'll want two o. I'm pretty sure. I think one two one. Uh,